Hey guys, hope you are well. Um, first off, let me start by apologizing for the lack of uploads on the on the channel over the past month or two. Uh, I've just been incredibly busy and unfortunately my priority isn't um, YouTube. I always prioritize like my business and working and YouTube kind of comes, comes second to that. Um, I, I consider myself like a, a businessman over a YouTuber as much as I I enjoy making content and the second reason is I generally try to go for like quality over quantity um, at least that's what I would like to think maybe, maybe some people disagree but um, I only really want to put out videos when I feel that I have something um, something interesting to share so and here we are here we are with a video which means that I have something interesting for you I don't believe anyone else is doing this, at least I haven't come across it uh, with the people that I've spoken to. This is an AI generated model that we made. If it wants to focus, which it doesn't. This is an AI generated model of my my girlfriend um, that we built. So we uploaded, uh, it was about 80 pictures of her and the AI model analyzes all of the pictures, understands her features, um, you know, specific features to her, such as she has like some tattoos and things like that. And it has now generated its own model. So we are now able to mass generate, and I literally mean mass generate thousands, tens of thousands even, uh, of pictures every single day, completely unique pictures. And as you can see, we've been doing this on Bumble. We have also been doing this on Tinder. Um, the accounts, again, because this model is, we've got a $5,000 camera that doesn't want to focus. Um, okay, you can kind of see a blue check mark. The, the accounts are, there we go. The accounts are verified. Um, they're completely active, like out of swipes. Um, they're active accounts. And for anyone that was doing Bumble like recently, um, the strategy that we found to be working best is to use completely unique pictures on every single account. It just kind of saves a lot of hassle. It becomes easier than needing to editing all of the pictures. It's much easier to give the model a requirement of send us 60 to 100 pictures per day. Now, but the only negative of that is that it took away from time that the model could be using to spend on other things such as you know making content, um, doing one-on-one -on -one video calls, whatever it may be. Now we have completely solved that problem that through AI we are able to mass generate pictures at, um, at, at scale. Um, and there's a lot, there's a ton of different use cases for this, by the way. So we're not only using this on Tinder and Bumble, however, Tinder and Bumble is the one that I'm prepared to, um, to, to sh share publicly um, at, 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 at the moment. Um, but there's a lot of use cases for what you can do with, um, with these pictures. So I'll, I'll see if so other people come up with some creative um, methods. And then as well, the bios are actually written with um, GPT-3. Um, one, I know that everyone's kind of been talking about GTP3 and I never put a video out about it because I just think everyone else is already talking about it. But the one place that I've found it to come in incredibly useful is, so I'm based in Georgia in Eastern Europe. Um, and you can find very high level English out here, but you'll be paying a premium for it as a, um, as a company. If you want top tier English, you will be paying much higher salaries. Whereas for kind of low level English, you can hire for about 300 to $350 per month out here. And so, as, and, and they will have like a basic level of English, but the grammar won't be there, but good enough to instruct GPT-3 to write out things for them. So now we use our team in Georgia um, to do anything like writing out bios for Instagram profiles, writing out bios for dating apps. And it really does quite a good job uh, at that. Every account we have, now has a completely unique bio. And just as a natural tendency of humans, like we tend to sound very like similar. Like if I write out a hundred 
different bios for Tinder and Bumble profiles, there are going to be some that sound very, very similar, whereas that is one great thing that GPT um, solves for us, as well as it solves the English problem. Now our team, we don't need to worry about grammar, checking what they're writing doesn't make any sense. <laughs> we haven't got any of those problems anymore. We can literally just have them write out 100 bios and um, rewrite them over on the, on, on the Tinder and the Bumble profiles. And the reason that I find this so interesting is because in our old company, um, a social media marketing agency that we had with um, like 140 employees, a big, big problem was hiring customer support staff. Um, and in order to find a good level of English, uh, it was uh, it, it would cost us quite a lot to run, run this support team. Um, whereas now with GPT-3, that issue would, um, would be solved. I'm also going to introduce you to another way that we are implementing um, artificial intelligence in this strategy. So again, just giving away a bit more details on our Bumble strategy. Um, this is a tool um, that I actually used in Colombia as well. It was quite fun to use considering my Spanish is terrible, called Write Mage. So, yes, camera. Let me even just come out of the frame. There we go. Um, so, okay, this is like a Bumble profile. And just to give you an example, uh, simply I will copy the message and it will take that text. And then from here, I can just say allow paste and I can ask this app to write me a flirty reply. I'm doing even better now that you've asked. And then I could like, so we can write out custom uh, GPT-3 prompts through iOS, um, through the keyboard. And literally all we need to do, again, this solves the problem of needing a team that speaks English, copy the text, it's automatically pasted, ran through GPT-3 and we can, we can even write out like custom responses. So we can say, write me a flirty reply and ask a question, getting to know that person and we'll, literally GPT-3 will write out an entire conversation for us. The team pastes the message and then we can have like a final custom button that says, reply to this message and say, hey, why don't you message me on, on Instagram? And so we have found this to be like a big, big reducer in, in bands as well. Um, but anyway, I'll just walk you through like the app that we're, that we're using as well. Um, so if we come over into the desktop, this, um, I'll put all, like this uh, in the description as well. I'll put a link to it because I know people will be, will be asking. Um, so you can kind of see like this again is a model based off of my, my girlfriend. So you could actually train uh, tons of different um, models on to, to generate pictures of even like the same girl. Um, so for example, I can do a photo shoot. I can design a photo shoot so I can say, generate me four pictures, portrait style pictures, uh, wide shot. I want her to be insanely beautiful in a Navy um, gym outfit. I want it to be daytime and I can say, and I want her to be at the gym. But if you want to get even more interesting with this, because we're targeting these accounts in all different locations around the world, I can say, do me a photo shoot in Amsterdam. Uh, I prefer not to change the age because I found that it, it makes too many changes to the facial structure and it becomes a little bit too artificial intelligency, let's say. It, it looks too, too fake. Um, and I can also, I also don't put any emotion on, again, for the same reason, because if it tries to make a smile, uh, it, it does, doesn't really work. It, it does work, but it's just much more detectable. Um, and it's kind of crazy, right, that we, um, that we live in a world where with all of the editing and things that kind of take place, you know, with um, FaceApp and, and all these, um, I forget, the Facetune, all these different kind of editing tools, we have now literally got to a point where people are not able to distinguish the difference between a computer-generated image, an AI-generated image of a model um, compared to a real picture of a girl. We do not get any, in fact, sorry, that, that's a, a lie. I have one guy who, um, on Bumble, who he was a PhD researcher in, in something and he literally messaged nice AI and everyone else 
is just, hey, gorgeous, da, da, da. No one is asking anything about, um, like, are, are you a real person or, like, whatever it is. Again, because it's based on real pictures of my girlfriend, like, the profiles are verified. Um, and, yeah, it's just quite crazy that no one's able to differentiate the difference between a, a computer-generated image and a fake person. This will take a couple of minutes to put together. It needs to warm up. But you can kind of see some of them come out not well. Um, and so you, we have like a manual process. Like the things to look out for are the eyes. You see one of the eyes here came out very badly. Uh, the hair here also didn't come out well. And this is just in general quite a bad image. Um, so literally we will just delete that. This was the team making them today. So they go through and sort them out. Uh, and the other thing is like, even if like maybe the bottom portion of the image isn't good, uh, we, we will literally just, just kind of zoom in. Um, like for example, we could zoom in on the face and the upper half of, of the body there. Um, and if I go into some of our like saved pictures, it will show some of like the, the higher quality ones that, that we used. Um, and again, this also has GPT-3 prompts built, built into it as well, by the way. So I can even ask to build out a um, custom photo shoot, like um, enormous boobs, just to give you <laughs> just to give you an example. That's what has happened on these ones. We were fi finding that we get higher swipes um, with bigger boobs. So that is the reason for that. Um, and again, we can just do like these photo shoots in all these different locations and generate as many images uh, as, as we need to. Uh, overall, I think it's really quite impressive um, technology. If they did go ahead and build out a, um, a video generation tool, which is very likely it will happen in the near future, uh, I think that will be incredibly interesting as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, I think this is like, rather than, uh, I hope that this is quite interesting as well. Like you're kind of seeing how we're actually applying AI within our business, which um, I don't think too many people are, are really kind of sharing how, how they're doing that. They're more just obsessed with AI, but not necessarily using it in very practical ways. These are real world use cases that we're generating revenue from. Um, it, using them very, very effectively in our marketing processes uh, for, for creating these Tinder and Bumble accounts, uh, as well as a, a few other use cases, as I mentioned as well. Um, because we're kind of paying the fee to generate these images, it's in my interest to find as many different use cases for them as possible. We've built out entire Instagram profiles off of these. I was also even thinking to go down the route of trying um, managing a profile that is publicly a virtual girlfriend like not a real person because i think there will be some people who have some quite bizarre um fetishes but they, they like the idea of this is a, a a virtual girl so i was even thinking about making a public um profile about this but again if you do use this things to really watch out for are the hair and the eyes and make sure that you're using like the high quality images so that you don't get don't get caught out uh, and yeah, I hope that this was um, hope that this was interesting. Um, it's, it's been a little while since I since I got to put together a little video. Um, yeah, thank you for watching.